Dogmatica is finally back. If you want 5% off any single or sealed product, head over to tierzerogames.com and use code GALZO5 at checkout. How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another video on the channel and today we have the new Dogmatica build for Photon Hypernova. Before we begin make sure to leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new and if you want to see these deck lists before they are released on my channel, join as a member to gain early access through our Discord server. So, some new cards out of Photon Hypernova released for Dogmatica and we are here to show you one of the most fun and also kind of toxic decks I've played in recent times. I've been really, really having fun testing with this deck, beating decks like Kostra, Tri Brigade, Branded. Um, this deck is, is kind of toxic, but on a rogue level, on a locals rogue level, it's really, really fun to use. So first of all, we have the new cards out of Photon Hypernova. We have three Dogmatica Albazoa, and then we have two Dogmatica Matrix. So the new Dogmatica Ritual Boss Monster is a big boy and now with two elements being gone and kit Kalos being banned this card and this deck becomes a lot better so first of all all of your dogmatica monsters are unaffected by the activated effects of extra deck monsters uh from your opponent's field which is huge this card is level 12 light 4000 4000 which is really huge during the main phase, you can activate its effect. Then your opponent chooses one of these effects and applies them to their to themselves. One option is to um, send a card to the graveyard from the hand or extra deck for every two cards in their extra deck. So it's a bit of a math problem, but if you are going first and you summon this card, um, what happens is that for every two cards in the extra deck, which means in total, they send seven cards from their hand and extra deck to the graveyard, just from this card's effect. The second effect is that you can return all fusion, synchro, exceeds or link monster you control to the extra deck, meaning your opponent controls because they choose the effect. If this card is summoned and your opponent does not control any fusion, synchro, exceeds or link monsters, they cannot apply this effect. So if you go first, activate this effect, they have to send seven cards from the hand uh, or and or extra deck to the graveyard, which is really, really huge. The new Dogmatica um, card, basically does two things it gets, it's a continuous when it's activated you can end one dogmatica ritual monster or one dogmatica ritual spell from your deck to your hand then if your opponent controls a monster you can add one dogmatica card from your deck to your hand which is this, like a secret effect it's really really strong especially going second it really helps break boards then if you control a ritual uh dogmatica ritual monster you can look at either extra deck send one monster from it to the graveyard so the whole point of this deck is using your extra deck as a resource and not as monsters that you actually summon. Basically getting rid of your opponent's extra deck altogether so they can basically not play at all. Then we are running a lot of things that help us achieve that goal. We are running three Diviner of the Herald, which is just incredible. It sends Herald of the Arclight to the graveyard, letting you search um, your ritual monsters and spells. It can also send an Ants to pop a card. Then we're playing something that does uh, things pretty similarly, which is Gale Jagra, which um, if you, you need to pay 3000 life points, send one monster from your deck, extra deck to the graveyard, and this is not once per turn. So opening this actually gets you a lot of advantage in games one and two. You can pay 6000 life points, send two cards from the extra deck, and it's really, really powerful. And you'll see exactly why, because our entire extra deck is full of cards that do something in the graveyard. Then we're playing the Dogmatica package. We're playing three Dogmatica Ecclesia, three Dogmatica Maximus, which is such a huge card in this deck. This card basically sends two monsters from your extra deck and your opponent's extra deck. That way you can just get your engine running. And then we're playing one Dogmatica Fleur de Lis, the Knighted. This Dogmatica engine is really, really good. It searches for a lot of things and you can also summon it during your end phase with Titanoclad. Then we're playing some hand traps because this dex engine is really, really small. We are playing Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. We are playing also, I had to go through the entire deck for the three infinite impermanence. And then as additional board breaking ability, we're playing a card that didn't see a lot of play recently, but makes a whole lot of sense in this deck. And it is Ultimate Slayer. This card is absolutely amazing in this deck because every card you send to your extra deck, uh, from your extra deck to the graveyard, 
does something. It gets rid of a lot of big bodies on the board. Your opponent cannot respond, and this card is a perfect fit for this kind of deck as a board breaker. Then some spells. We are playing three Dogmatica Calamity. This card is crazy in this deck. What it basically does, it's a ritual um, spell card, of course, and you can use it to summon any Dogmatica ritual monster. You can send a monster whose level is equal to the monster you want to summon from the extra deck to the graveyard. You don't need to use field or hand for this. So you send a level 12 monster basically from your extra deck. This is why you saw five headed dragon at the beginning and you summon the Dogmatica Albazoa, which is really, really crazy. This card, of course, locks you out of your extra deck, but we don't need that because we never summon it from it anyway. Then for um, additional consistency, we're playing one Dogmatica Macabre, which is um, another ritual spell that can summon also from the graveyard, um, and you can banish fusion or synchro monsters from your graveyard as material as well. So you don't want to see this always because you usually don't have, you know, a level 12 monster in your hand or graveyard, but for late game, this card is actually really good. Or of course, playing the three Nadir Servant, which does everything for, for this deck, honestly. And then two, uh, three Pot of Prosperity for additional consistency. Again, our extra deck is just utility. Then we're playing one Dogmatica Punishment and one Shadal Schism. Yeah, we summon Winda in this deck. So, for the extra deck, we have the two level 12s, which are the Five Headed Dragon and Quintet Magician. There is no reason why you should play these specifically. Any level 8 Synchro or Fusion monster will be okay for you. Right now, there is no monster that actually gets you value when it's sent to the graveyard. The new Despia Synchro monster in Cyberstorm Access actually will uh, be a good uh, way to summon the Albazoa. But right now, choose a level 12 that you like. Um, it's preferably good when they are fusion monsters and also dark, so you can use them for Shadal Schism with Apcolone to summon the window, so this is the only um, rule I would give for this. Then we have one Elder Entity Ents, we have two Titanoclad, the Ash Dragon to get our Dogmatica monsters, then we have one Shadal Apcolone and one Shadal Winda. This deck makes window really easily with cards like Nadir Servant, Maximus, uh, Dogmatica Matrix. You can send your own cards. And honestly, it's a win condition for the deck. And since Winda is legal, you're going to see a lot of Tier Elements players summon Winda as well. Then we have the Wind Pegasus, just as an interruption from the graveyard. We have two Herald of the Arclight. Super, super, super important. Might up this to three instead of the Wind Pegasus. But right now, games either end on... You know, you either lose really fast or you win, um, you just OTK. Um, so yeah, for links that we do summon, we're playing the one Almirage, and then we're playing the one Secure Gardna that I actually thought I had, but I don't. Um, Secure Gardna uses a link monster um, to summon itself. So what you basically do is when you have something like Gale Dagra or, um, you know, the Herald of the, um, Diviner of the Herald, you summon the Diviner, activate the effect, you search, then you go Almirage, and then you go secure Gardna, and then you have a link monster to banish for things like Maximus in the graveyard. So this is why you play that, also protects you from battle damage. And then we are playing um, two more Ultimate Slayer targets. We're playing the Mirror Logic Aggregator for Xyz monsters, and we're gonna be playing, um, this is not Trouble Sunny, even though you can use Trouble Sunny, I am using here the new Link 5 Tri-Brigade monster from Photon Hypernova. Um, just replace it with that, I just don't have the card yet, so yeah, this is basically the extra deck. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see this deck in action, tune in to my live streams. We should be doing one um, every Wednesday where I play these decks um, in front of you, live of course. And if you want to get early access or ask me, questions specifically, join as a member to gain early access to all the deck lists through our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.